All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the Project Operations Weekly. I need to rename this doc because this doc says Project Working Group. Um, huzzah. All right, so first, first thing that I thought it would be useful is to resync on exactly what this group is doing to make sure that everyone participating in the group is like on board and aware of what we have signed up to, um, to contribute to the IPFS project and, and how we want to be successful and then talk some, some meta things about how to run this meeting and um, especially given the different areas of our, um, of our responsibility and the other calls that we have now arrayed on our schedule, um, want to make sure that we're using this time super effectively um, and then hopefully go through things like Q3 draft OKRs, um, which I know some people have been iterating on in the past couple days. And then um, if there are any tactical, I know there are a couple of things in flight post IPFS camp, and so I want to make sure that we're, um, we're covering any of the kind of actionable things that are, we're working on right now. Any other things to add to our agenda or reorder? Well, maybe we'll come up with some when we talk about what it is we do in this meeting and we'll come up with some new ideas of things you want to talk about. Um, awesome. So talking about what it is this group has, has kind of signed up to do, it's a little bit of a, a conglomeration group that, that goes across a couple of different edges. Um, the, the things that we've talked about and the things we understood is um, we needed something that was previously kind of part of the project working group in Q2, but also not really explicitly part of the project working group was thinking about things like community and communications and um, making sure that the project is effectively messaging for itself and so that kind of from a interfacing with the community and understanding what the community needs of us and being a feedback loop um, with the community to make sure that we're, we're understanding those problems is like a core facet of what we think this project operations group is going to be doing. Um, and so that involves things like creating blog posts, um, making sure that we're, we're doing good release notes, making sure that we are um, effectively communicating to the community when there are problems that we want them to be aware of, when we need their help on something, um, and that we're, we're interfacing well with like our collaborators and, um, and just generally doing a good job communicating if anything comes up on the internet about IPFS, we wanna make sure that we are aware of it and we are able to respond to it and respond to it effectively such that everyone has a very clear idea of kind of, um, you know, what, what the project needs from them. Um, and so that's kind of a big chunk. Something that bled out of that was also understanding where the, the core implementations of IPFS are going and making sure that there's kind of a group that's continuing to think about that. We also have now an hour long core implementations kind of engineering sync um, the, the hour after the project work, the, sorry, the weekly IPFS call every week. And so I think we'll actually, we'll be do it using that for like tactical engineering process of like, you know, do we want to add this feature to the JS or IPFS or both implementations of the core protocol? Um, and so that is gonna be like our tactical engineering meeting for um, actually doing iterations on the core protocol. But here we might use this meeting for kind of the more meta, um, like, hey, I need help writing release notes, or, um, you know, we want to do, do this change to our release process that maybe belongs more in like project operations than actual implementation iteration. Um, and so there's that chunk. And then that also includes maintenance on many different areas of the core protocol, things that we're not actively investing in right now, but that we want to continue on in the future very effectively. And so that's stuff like, um, like either desktop or um, other UIs or, or other features that we have put out in the past where we're like, we want them to be great, we want everyone to be using them, but we don't want to be investing a whole ton in them right now. Um, I guess thinking back on that, collaborations also includes obviously all of the great work that, that Lytle and DJ and folks have been doing with browsers. Those are very big collaborators that we absolutely want to be super successful. Um, and then finally, there's a chunk of this that is planning for the future um, and looking to the future from a research perspective. So this is not like a cross-group planning meeting, but it does include a little bit of um, kind of thinking proactively about where, where we, we need to be um, heading as a project and doing the pre-work from a research perspective to get that done. So there's a lot of different things in this meeting um, and we should find a, a structure for it that will allow us to knock things out across all of those different buckets pretty effectively and when necessary split groups out into their other meetings, kind of like the, the implementations weekly. Um, 
there was a hand. Michelle, do you have a question or a comment or something? Um, well, after, after you finish talking, maybe I should, where do we conceal the meetings go? I'm not super clear on how the core implementation coordination interacts with um, the other meeting and then also the work that we're doing on the core. I mean, all of our separate meetings are work on the core. So, but I'm happy to leave that for a week from now or two weeks from now once we see how the meetings fall out. Yeah, my, my kind of, my idea for this is that this would be a meeting where folks like Alan and Steven would um, be like pulling kind of us as members of this project operations group being like, great, we need help um, iterating on this part of the core protocol. We, we need the support from a communications perspective, from a community um, support perspective so that we can be spending our time um, you know, actually iterating on the core protocol itself um, and like making sure that we have a great um, process. And so that's what this chunk of the meeting would be. The implementations meeting is kind of like the JS and IPFS working group meetings were previously run where it's hitting through different um, initiatives that, that various of the other task forces are bringing to that and doing things like making sure that we have an agreement upon which direction the design is heading and that a feature that maybe the gateway team really needs is not going to um, be a problem for the package managers group or vice versa. And, um, and then each of the different weekly calls from all of the different groups will be focused very specifically on, you know, package manager needs or gateway needs, um, but would, would go through that core implementation call when um, they need like a design review or we need to get like top level agreement on the direction the protocol, the core protocol is heading. Um, so when it touches like protocol design and stuff. We'll see. Sounds good. Um, David has a question in the chat about um, the focus. Is this by the IPFS community and for the IPFS community? Um, yes. Yeah, my question, given that this call is on the community calendar and gets recorded to, um, I, I guess it's just good to reiterate for the group uh, that like we should focus solely on the action items aspects questions that are for IPFS projects. So this is not like protocol apps. IPFS project um, or Protocol Labs IPFS team. Uh, it, it's really a, the IPFS community of project operations call. Isn't the other, isn't the Tuesday every other week call that call? Like there's one week public, one week internal? Yes, yeah, so we do have a, an alternating week meeting um, specifically for anything that um, kind of the Protocol Labs contingent of the team needs. Um, the aim for this meeting is to be specifically around um, project operations for the IPFS project globally, um, community open and all of that stuff, um, talking about things like collaborations and communications and such that's super open. And then um, there is another alternating meeting also on Tuesdays, which is actually a new meeting, um, which is going to be kind of a cross task force update meeting. Um, so where, where this one is going to be really focused on the stuff that we need to be bringing to the, the table, like making sure that there is great um, community interaction and we are doing a good job communicating and we're, you know, supporting um, folks in the browser space who need to be doing um, really awesome work getting IPFS by default into browsers. Um, and we're, we're going to focus on that in this meeting. And then in the kind of cross working group meeting, it'll be a little bit more like um, top level status reports and um, making sure that we're unblocking different groups against each other and kind of more meta um, issues or challenges that we're experiencing as part of that. And that one will also be um, open to everyone. Other thoughts or questions or things that feel I lost like track of that one again, sorry. Which one? So there's an, uh, okay. That's alternating right. Tuesdays, the cross, <laughs> okay. the cross working group update meeting, alternating Tuesdays. It's the super that's, group. Yeah, that's the one that sounds more like the old project meeting to me than this one. Yeah, I, I think uh, there's going to be, we've kind of split it. It's like, there's it like little bits of both. Like previously, our project working group call had the communication collaboration stuff. Um, and then it also kind of had like meta project stuff, but we kept having less and less time for meta project stuff because we spent all of our time doing things like actually planning IPFS camp and other stuff like that. Um, and now we've kind of split them into two separate meetings. So we actually have 
project operation work, and then we have kind of meta cross group work in a separate meeting. Yeah, super. Thank you so much for the clarification. Super happy to kind of like reset my brain and just like accept the new calls. Um, I, I guess uh, the reason why I brought up this question is because in the past there was like some confusion about like what is internal, what is external, like what what should we be communicating outside, what should we be inviting people to to join us to discuss. Um, and so I just thought asking this question. Yeah, and so I think um, I definitely. Going forward, we, we discussed this a little bit last week, but going forward, definitely inviting people to this call, um, especially folks who want to um, help out from a communication perspective or things like that, people who are writing blog posts or books or whatever about IPFS. There is an IPFS book that um, I saw a very early draft of translated from Chinese into English, um, which is really awesome. So when things like that happen and we want to bring people with those sorts of communication collaboration things, bring them to this meeting and, and talking about that, um, completely reasonable. And definitely something I, I hope will happen even next week. Future? Yeah, the, I, I think over the first couple of iterations of this meeting, we'll probably see where the attention goes and where the important bits float to the top. Are there any things that we should hit on specifically every week in this meeting? Is there, are there a set of things that we say, okay, this meeting is where we check out on, check it on X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I think um, some things that I'd like to check in on are um, kind of what's, what's been happening from kind of a, a community perspective, whether that's um, like, are there known, um, like, is there any communication that's happening in the community that we, we want to be escalating and we want to be making sure we respond to who's kind of DRI on that? Uh, if there's no DRI in that, we should figure out how to get a DRI on it and what is our strategy for um, responding to it. And so it's like, you know, if there's, um, you know, a post up, a new article that we kind of want a response to, or if there's something happening in the community that we think that we should be communicating out about, um, and this should, which should be a meeting where we check in on that. I think checking in on um, kind of release process is also a, a useful thing to do here. I know there's been a lot of movement on that in the past week, so I'd love to check in on, on that as well. Um, I think it looks like Stephen and Raul have been chatting back and forth. I have not finished the entire GitHub thread, but it sounds really exciting. Um, looking forward to hearing the approach. Um, I think when there are updates or, or things that need to happen from a research or maintenance perspective, I, would, I want this to be a forum where we, like, we at least have a line item where we're like, is there any anything from kind of a, an update perspective, like either an update on research that we want all to be reviewing and giving feedback on um, of like, you know, here, here is like our lit review and we wanna make sure we're being informed and how are we communicating that and how are we disseminating it out to the rest of the community to get us feedback on it. Um, or if there's any like maintenance issues that we kind of need to help escalate and get prioritized across other groups, even though this is not, you know, they're maintenance things, but they're important and we need to make sure that we're, we're doing a good job supporting our our users with that. And so those are kind of like, I kind of imagine like a checklist of each of those things being like, what is our update from communications? What is our update from implementations? Does that sound reasonable? My, uh, my unmute button ended up right where my hotkey to lock my screen was. <laughs> that, that sounds really great. Having, having that set of things in the template for this meeting will probably help it to one, make sure we hit those, those boxes every time. And two, that we don't, um, you know, meander all around. Because I think with the amount of things that we have, it will be keeping this meeting, uh, at least making sure that we hit the, those top priority items will be a challenge. There will always be something coming up, especially if we're inviting uh, guests. True. And we'll also have a, um, we kind of have a hard stop to this meeting so that we can all go to the IPFS weekly. And so if we have other things to talk about, we're not going to have the time to yeah. <laughs> Um, cool. On, on that note, let's kind of consider the, what we do in this call and how we kind of think we're going to run it going forward. Um, I'll make sure that the template for next week has those line items so we can jump through them. Um, the other things on my list were Q3 draft OKRs and um, the thing from kind of a communication standpoint was post IPFS camp follow-up. Um, I think as a thing to add would be if, if there are any updates on release process side or things that we should be kind of, uh, if there should become an action item from a communications perspective to be helping communicate out the release process, um, which I think um, I, I definitely put myself on the hook last week for continuing to help with um, disseminating a, a new release process. 
All right. Um, all right, do we wanna take a pass first through draft OKRs? I started last week before I disappeared into the woods to kind of uh, KRIs, the set of things that were in the Q3 team document, mm -hmm. but I did not start moving them over into the OKR sheet at all. So it'd be great if the people that are working on those relevant bits did a pass, and I'm not sure if they did or not. I think probably not quite yet, but let's use this opportunity. This is, this is the doc, right? Project operations. Um, and so kind of our, our early look is here in terms of um, a quality release schedule. Um, and we have some metrics here around um, a release policy and two releases for the quarter, which two releases per implementation. Uh, is that a bit much for one quarter with all the other things? Especially, I don't think we have people working on JS right now, really? Maybe? We so I, one of the goals that we talked about, and so I just threw that number out there. Uh, that's how you start. Throw a number out there, and then we can adjust it up or down and see how it goes. But that actually came out of a specific discussion around uh, cadence releases. Mm -hmm. so that it's not about uh, the designing a release as much as creating a release cadence where we're releasing on a regular schedule as a result of the output of some of the release management stuff that Stephen and Raul are talking about. Yeah. I got it. Davine, hand? Yeah, the, the tiny bit that I would add is like, it's not necessarily about the number of releases, but like really sticking to the release policy. Uh, we are discussing like a six week release schedule. Uh, if that gets done, then like it's literally two per quarter, but like it's two per quarter depending on how we start, when you start. Um, and, and there's always like something else happening in the quarter. So yeah, I think that if we get the new release flow uh, reviewed and merged very soon, then we'll have stages per release. And, and like measuring that if we are following the stages, if we're getting the right feedback at each stage, um, if we are discovering bugs and like fixing them before releasing, I, I think that will uh, be the, um, a nice metric and, and like forcing us to just push the releases off. Something about this needs to be workshopped, but um, I guess maybe Alan and Steven, if you guys want to kind of help continue iterating on this from a whatever, whatever you expect the release process to be looking like. Like I agree with David's point that like going through the stages, having a release that goes healthily through the stages that we design in a release process. Um, like maybe this is just a healthy release or something like that. Um, I know that we've also talked about um, making sure that we don't put out releases until we go through this healthy release process um, and so we don't other than like patch fixes or anything like that um, and so continuing along those lines i i agree that we shouldn't be counting ourselves on number of releases but on the the quality of of release we put out um, and just to respond to michelle's point really quickly um, folks like the web browsers group do need new releases of js ipfs in order to be hitting our goal of very successfully getting broad browser adoption. And so we will be continuing to put out um, JS and IPFS releases of the core protocols. Um, it, it just might be different but based on like the number of new features being added because a lot of people need Go IPFS features for package managers and stuff like that. Cool, I'm aware that we're almost, we're a little short on time. Uh, a link to the release process thread. Yes. Um, Stephen, could you take a pass at dropping that in the, the doc? Thank you. All right. Let's just continue on to the next one. Collaboration is systematized and prioritized. Dietrich? Seeing as the, the time is running short, do we want to maybe just have an action item for each one of the, maybe put the DRIs next to these and have them do that this pass. Sure, sure. Hitting all these OKRs in, in less than five minutes. That'd be rough. Um. 
um, for warming of views. <clears throat> I assume that's going to be you and me, Dietrich. Does that seem like yeah. I mean, maintained. Um, who kind of wants to do the DRI going forward for this area? I think this yeah, we can. Uh, I can take. Uh, put my name down for now, and then I'll be at the desktop and do a meeting later this week, and we can talk about. It. Okay. And then divide your research. All right. Reasonable. Folks feel confident in being able to flush these out over the next couple of days, and we can kind of check in async in this doc and try and move to the spreadsheet by end of week. Sound reasonable? I see nods and thumbs. Huzzah, Bundaba. I will stop sharing this so I can refine the notes. All right, draft OKRs. In this doc, we will iterate. Um, all right, follow up post IPFS camp. I know that David has a blog in progress. Thank you, David. Um, are you blocked on anything, or what do we need in order to get that out kind of early this uh, week? Well, um, essentially, even today. So. Right now, um, we have one last uh, tiny thing to add. So either we decide to do some highlights on this blog post, like we reference some of the presentations we really like or some of the core courses that we really like. Uh, we just need to kind of like agree on like how to do that without also saying that like these are our favorites and like <laughs> like we, we, we want to like tell the community that there are some that are even more especially exciting but we don't want to tell the, to tell the, the content creators that the ones that are not especially, like the, the ones that they've made are not necessarily especially exciting. All of them are really good. Um, and so I have a proposal on that pull request for you, Molly, to review. Um, but, but other than that, um, just let me know what you think. And yeah, we, we can potentially merge it today or tomorrow. Okay, cool. I'll take a pass at that first thing after all of these meetings and hopefully we can um, do you mind if I if I feel 100% great on everything can I just merge it for you absolutely Is that? cool yeah. sounds good um, collecting community posts I know that a number of these have already started happening um, who kind of wants from a, a like organization perspective maybe we can be like sending them all to the PL news or like on Slack or on IRC or somewhere where folks can um, be like indexing on them and helping retweet them and um, generally ensure the rest of the community is aware of them. I think we should also collect them so that we can make a master <laughs> blog post of like here are all of the amazing things that came out of IPFS camp or continue putting them somewhere so that others can index on them really nicely. Um, and then I remember we, we discussed last time Shokunin also um, being excited about just coordinating the back and forth on that. And so I'm going to ask him to come to this meeting next week now that we have this meeting um, so that we can talk about kind of just doing that, that top level cat herding to, to get even more people talking about the really cool stuff they presented during IPFS camp and make it really accessible to folks who weren't able to attend. An issue in the camp report. That's a great idea. Yeah, so um, the Rimi of IPFS slash camp is becoming this kind of like source of truth, like this index for everything. Um, thank you all that helped like push the tables, that like made it really nice to like go through like the photos of the people that created the content with the titles. Uh, we are waiting on Zach to like publish the videos. Like as soon as Zach publishes something, we'll just like link it there and perhaps do a tweet. Um, then we can also use the Rimi to list all the articles that got published about IPFS camp. Uh, I, I think that will be a good thing. That said, uh, I still think that we as a project really need like a better media and updates page. So if you go to ipfs.io slash media, um, it has some talks, it has like a long list of like multiple talks, but like no highlighted talks. And like we as a team, as a community produce so much content that like I think the community right now needs some help from us on directing them, like directing their attention. Um, so maybe as a, a project, a tiny project for this quarter, um, is think how can we have a media page that like we can list articles and videos or even give a path like are you new to FFS? Watch these videos first. Um, do you want to know what's the latest? Check out what is happening, right? Um, yeah.
That's a great idea. I'll, I'll add that to the, to the comms list of things to do from this group. Perfect. All right, we're, we're now over time and so we need to hop, but anything very quickly from the release process update work, any kind of like asks or blockers or things that would be useful to, um, for folks to page in on? I think we can have all those discussions uh, out of band on VRs. But there's a lot of things to discuss. Like we don't even know what type of release process we want. Or like we could have a train process. We could have what the current process is, which is a release cycle process. Uh, and we like need to actually discuss these trade-offs. So it'll be a while. We also, we also need to decide what the requirements are uh, in terms of like just deciding the release process before we go to the next release, or do we also want to rev up all of our testing uh, because that's like one of the key things we're missing and one of the, the key things I don't think the release process would just match up the fix. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of like start at both ends and meet in the middle. Um, we, we definitely want to improve like any kind of automation, like just, just save, like it will save us a ton of time in the end. Um, but I, I guess like maybe Alan can speak more to it, but like the JS release process, which is considerably manual, um, with the exception for the unit tests and the GitHub tests we have, uh, actually helps not only communicate to the community like what is going on, uh, what is coming, but also helps us like catch bugs because we get to run a bunch of other people's tests um, with, the, with the next implementation. And so it, it has a cost, it has like a time cost for sure, but it has been very good for the last year and all. Uh, but the point is whether we have to decide what the, the basically what the cutoff is for cutting release because at the moment we have to maintain two uh, copies of everything, that's good two branches, and this will work maybe for a month or two, but after that we're gonna start getting many merge conflicts and just not gonna work. Sorry, you don't need to I think a uh, technical point, we're, we're out of time. Thank you all very much for um, a great first call and I will restructure the agenda next time to make sure we can hit on these things all real fast. And if we realize we need to, we'll make sure that we have more time for this meeting um, because there's a lot of different things to cover and I wanna make sure we don't continually run up against the, the next meeting. All right, thank you guys so much. Have a great next rest of your week. Probably see you all very shortly.